Have you ever wondered, how can I avoid being audited by the IRS? I'll tell you. Hi, I'm Jeff Fouts, a tax attorney located in Metro Atlanta with a nationwide law practice helping clients who have serious IRS problems. So, how can you avoid being audited by the IRS? While there are no steps or actions you can take that will guarantee that you will never be audited by the IRS, there are some steps that you can take to reduce the odds that one of your tax returns will be selected. The Internal Revenue Service announces the types of tax returns that they intend to target each year. For example, the IRS may target tax returns that show more than a certain amount of income, or perhaps less than a certain amount of income. Or they may target tax returns of self-employed people, or tax returns that claim a particular tax deduction, or a particular tax credit. In addition, the IRS also audits tax returns based upon certain red flags, as well as the tax returns filed by unscrupulous tax preparers. To lower your chances of being selected for an audit and to increase your odds of winning if you are audited, you should follow certain steps before, fi before filing your tax return. And one of them I just mentioned, do not hire a tax preparer based upon how much refund they say they're going to get you. We see it all the time. Perhaps you met somebody in a truck stop or in a, believe it or not, the parking lot of a mall or all your fellow employees were using this guy and they're all getting back great refunds. Stop it. The name of the game is not to get the biggest refund necessarily, but it's to file a correct tax return. Because what happens a lot are these big tax refunds that everybody's getting, those are just targets for audits, and the tax preparer is, might be actually committing fraud or something like that. So you just need to be very, very, very careful of things like that. So you should also be sure to report all of your income. The IRS has a computerized matching program that compares all information that it receives under your Social Security number to the information that you put on your tax return. Reviewing your bank statements for the year is one way to catch or to see if you perhaps left off any unreported income. You can look at the deposits you made. If you accidentally do leave income off of your tax return, you will be sure that the IRS will send you a letter that they've increased your taxes. They may not send it right away, or, you know, or they may audit you in the future. You should be sure that all of your numbers on your tax return add up correctly. With the increased use of computerized tax return programs, this type of error has declined greatly, but it's still up to you to be sure that all of your numbers on your tax return are added and subtracted correctly. You should also review your tax return for unusually large numbers or for similar deductions taken in multiple places on your tax return because that may be a signal that you've made a mistake. You should carefully review your entire tax return. For example, TurboTax asks in at least three different places in their automated tax interview process for your home mortgage interest. We have seen cases where a tax preparer deducted their entire home mortgage in four different places. For example, on their Schedule A, their Schedule C, their Schedule E, and their Form uh, 2106. And, you know, I can guarantee you that while this may have been an honest mistake, it's a mistake that the IRS will want you to correct and may penalize you for making. It's also very easy to mistakenly type in an incorrect entry onto your tax return that could either dramatically increase the tax you owe or increase the tax refund that you are due. Be careful not to take unreasonable or untruthful tax deductions. The IRS doesn't care for that. We once saw a tax return that, that where the, the taxpayer had claimed that he'd driven over 1,000 miles a day for business 365 miles, 365 days a year. Well, even if the mileage was 100% correct, the IRS is very unlikely, is, is, pardon me, is very likely to audit this tax return to make the taxpayer verify that what they put on the tax return was in fact correct. And that's what they did with this individual. The IRS isn't stupid. Another thing is don't file as head of household if you are really marry filing separately. Also, you should not claim a person as a dependent if you don't qualify to claim that person just to get the income uh, tax credit. 
the earned income tax credit. Don't do that. If it ain't, if they're not your dependent, don't claim them. Also, you shouldn't take unreasonable tax positions. Let's not play the, game, the, the audit roulette here. You need to be realistic. The penalties and the interest just aren't worth it. Also, don't incorrectly take business deductions. Don't, you know, just, just be careful there. Uh, also, you shouldn't uh, deduct, uh, incorrectly deduct personal expenses. For example, um, if you have expenses that you incur on behalf of your employer or your own, and you put that on your tax return, but you would have been eligible to be reimbursed for those expenses if you had turned in an expense report, your, if your employer would have reimbursed you, if you just simply ask and you forgot to ask, well, that doesn't mean that you're entitled to deduct that expense. You know, I, I need to say that in closing, the tax code is confusing. Even the IRS's own Taxpayer Advocate Service stated in one of their annual reports to Congress, quote, that the most serious problem facing taxpayers is the complexity of the internal revenue code. Can I get an amen to that? The sheer number of words in the code has tripled over the last three decades it's actually a miracle that taxpayers don't make more mistakes on their tax returns than they do. It's no wonder that more and more taxpayers are turning to tax professionals to help them correctly interpret the tax code and to help them uh, prevent from being audited. I, I mean, the tax code, <laughs> we all know that it's horrible. We all know that it just about makes a criminal of us all because everyone is going to make a mistake, large or small. And it's a darn shame. But, you know, we can't change the tax code overnight, it looks like. So I hope this important video tip has helped you understand the IRS a little better and about how tax problems and audits in particular are dealt with. Chances are you have questions or concerns about your own particular tax problem. What I encourage you to do is pick up the phone and call me. I can answer your questions. Over the past 20 years, I've represented clients in all 50 states and 29 foreign countries, and I welcome your call. You can reach me at 800-509-2770 or by email at jfouts at taxhelpattorney.com. I'm Jeff Fouts, and thanks so much for watching. Have a great day.